I already know my stuff comes out good when I pour it on. Th these are for you. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? It's time for another glaze review. If you're new to this series of the channel, welcome. How are you doing by the way? This is a certain playlist in which I take glazes off of the shelf and test them for you on multitudes of clay. But today is a tiny bit different because today, not only are we testing a glaze, but we're also gonna be fighting, me and you. Me, me and you, go, me and you gonna fight in this episode. Don't worry, we're not breaking up or anything. You know I love you, you know I always love you, girl. So today, we're gonna be testing Albany Slip Brown from the Potter's Choice line Amico. Its number is PC-32 and it has that little food safe sticker on it. You know, a little lead free, let you know that if you use it properly, it's, it's okay to eat off of. This is actually one of my favorite glazes from quite some time ago. I used to buy this color when I was in Alpha Fired Arts all the time. It was one of the colors that I would get a multitude of colors out of if I mixed it with Fabric Red or if I mixed it with my Ron Roy's High Gloss Black. But this is one of the ones that like I could go without, but whenever I went for a glaze that I knew would get a lot of melt and a lot of variation in color, I knew that this would be true to the test style on the bottle. There's so many glazes that I've tested that I see the test style on the bottle and I'm like, oh, this will be super cool. It'll come out just like that. And it doesn't. But this comes out exactly how you think it would. On top of testing this, you and I are going to have a little fight. Let me explain. Many of you probably already know that I'm sponsored by Amico, which is largely attributed with making wonderful glazes. Now, the way that I got sponsored by Amico is that I started doing these videos called glaze reviews, where I would get one of their glazes, I would test them on brown clay, on white clay, and mix them with a bunch of my other glazes just to see how they go. I'm pretty much testing out the glazes for you before you buy them. And let's face it, there's far more people in the world that buy bottled glazes than know how to make their glazes and use them on a daily basis such as myself. But there's one thing that Amico noticed that I do with my glazes that many people don't do with their glazes. I like to pour on my glazes onto the product. What I usually do is I wax the bottom of my bowls or whatever have you and then I'll just put some type of thing underneath it to catch the glaze while glazing the rest of the pot. But in doing so I usually just open up a fresh bottle and pour it on there. Not only have I always done this, I've also usually gotten much better results than a lot of people who brush. But because I started making these videos, there's tons of you in the comments below who are like, That's not how you're supposed to use the glaze. This is, it's, a, it's a brushing glaze. It's not a dipping glaze. It's not a pouring glaze. It's not, you're using it wrong. So after a while, the question arose. If I'm using the glaze inaccurately and still getting good, if not better results than some people who are glazing with a brush, then am I really doing it wrong? And today, we're gonna put this to the test. And for those of you who don't care about the experiment, we're also going to be testing out Amico's Albany Slip Brown PC-32 from the Potter's Choice line. Not only are we going to be using this as an experiment, I'm also technically fighting with you. You see this bowl on my right hand side? Well, that's my bowl. You see those bowls on your left hand side? Those are all of your bowls. I am so confident that I am gonna get better color out of this glaze doing it my way than brushing it on your way that I am going to bet this one bowl against your three bowls over here, of which I am going to put two, three, and four coats of this glaze on here just for you, while I, myself, with my one bowl, am going to pour on my glaze and just fire it exactly how it is. Not only am I gonna pour on my glaze, I'm using a brand new brush that I'm going to take the sticker off in front of you that somebody donated to me. Thank you very much, by the way. And I am also using a brand new fresh bottle of Amico Glaze. You can see me peel it off right now. I have not added water to it yet. I have not shaken it yet. I'm gonna do it right in front of you. Now I do understand that I am at a slight disadvantage because number one, you have technically two or three times more the possibilities than I do. I'm also, for the sake of science, going to record myself glazing each and every one of these so that you saw that I did not cheat. I'm going really far lengths for this one, guys. I have a new bottle of glaze from Amico. I have a brand new brush. I'm betting my one against your three, and you're about to watch me glaze all three of these with two, three, and four coats. I do understand that the instructions say only put three coats on, but I kind of want to see what happens when we put two coats on, and I also want to see what happens when we put four coats on. Because if this comes out the same as this, 
well then I think it's pretty safe to say that the equivalent of me pouring on a glaze is just as good as four coats. And that's the reason why I'm doing two, three, and four. Don't worry, I'm gonna fast forward it. I'm not gonna make you guys watch me glaze all three or four of these bowls in real time. I wouldn't do that to you, but I do need to show you how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it, and the equipment that I'm using, fresh equipment, just for the one guy in the comments below. Oh, he didn't do it properly, he cheated. No, no I'm doing this for you. You shut up, click the like button, and you appreciate it. Let's do my bowl first, because my bowl is really just a pour on. It's one of the reasons why I glaze like this. It's much faster and easier, and most of the time I get better color anyway. Okay, my bowl is all done over there. Now, let's do the two coat bowl. We're gonna put two coats on the inside, and two coats on the outside. Listen, all you New Yorkers. Listen, all you New Yorkers. Okay, so we're pretty divvied up here. Let's go over it one more time before we put these in the kiln. Okay, so for anyone who skipped ahead to this point, let's go over all the parameters right before we put these in the kiln. On the left hand side, we have your side, which is two, three, and four coats. I used a brand new brush, and I also used a brand new bottle of Amico Glaze, which is Albany Slip Brown PC-32. This side is your side. On this side, I have my one bowl, which I poured on the inside, poured it out into a bucket, poured that glaze from the bucket back in the bottle, and then poured it onto the outside with a pair of tongs. All of these have wax resist bottoms, all of these were basically glazed the same way while this one was poured, and every single one of these is fresh out of the bag, be mixed with no grog clay. 
on top of that, I'm also going to be putting all of these in the same place inside of a Cone 6 oxidation near brand new scut. The one thing that I kind of regret about this experiment is that technically when you're brushing a glaze on, you're supposed to be doing this. You're supposed to glaze the inside, right, as you normally would as you saw me do earlier. And when you turn it upside down, you have to brush one coat this way and wait for it to dry, which I did wait for it to dry. Then you're supposed to coat one coat this way and wait for it to dry, and that's two coats. And then you're supposed to do another coat this way. You're supposed to basically alternate coats. That's how you're supposed to do it. That being said, no one ever does it that way. Everything usually turns out fine. And I'm also keeping track of like 20 things already for you. And I really don't want to track that one extra thing. And I feel like I have a bit of a bias because people who have been with the channel long enough have seen my work and I've only done this so far. I refuse to brush. I almost refuse to brush except for in this one instance. Do me one little favor before we put these in the kiln. I want you to tell me which one of these four you think will come out the best in the comments below. The reason I ask you this is because I've already been through this experiment myself. I hate brushing. It takes a lot of time. I don't like to wait for the coats to dry. It, it takes like quadruple the time as a normal pour would. But when you pour it on, it's, it's like you pour it, you hold it upside down for maybe 10, 20 seconds, wait for it to dry and then you set it down. But I do want to hear your comments about this before we put these in the kiln. There's so many people that were like, oh, I never even thought of pouring my glaze. And I think after this video, I might open a couple eyes up to the new way of glazing, which is not with a brush. Yeah! Let's take a look at your side first. This is the bowl with two coats on it. You know this actually isn't too bad. I've glazed with a homemade glaze before and I never get this even of a coat. I don't know if it's just because I am good at glazing if I can say that without getting hateful comments below. But this is very true to what the bottle looks like it's going to be. It's not like they lied to me or anything. Even with only two coats, this still came out really nice and glassy. I'm feeling around and I don't feel any negative spots. Usually when you underglaze something, you can feel like some dry spots and you see a coat missing. Like you see that right there, that little bit? That would be all over the entire clay body. There's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of that down here, but you can't even see it, nor can you really feel it unless you're honestly really trying. This one's pretty good. I'm actually very surprised that this one came out as well as it did. There's one little spot right there that's kind of missing, but I don't think that's so much because of the glaze. I think that's more because like I might have dripped a little bit of wax resist right there and that's what's making that. So this came out fairly good. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really use it to put in the store. I might reglaze it. Put your comments down below if you want me to reglaze it. That way I can like sell these two as a set, you know, but other than that, it's, it's probably gonna go in the no-go box. Okay, let's take a look at the three coat bowl. This one came out much more even and white, if you can see it in the middle right here, but the outside looks relatively the same. The outside still has that Albany slip brown, super duper melty look to it. I don't think if I put on more coats of this, it would really help this, but I do notice that the more coats of this stuff that I put on in the middle, like the thicker I make it, for example, the edge right here, you can really see where I put extra glaze on the very top right here. I'm noticing kind of a trend that the thicker the glaze is on certain parts, the more white it gets like this, which is kind of what the test style suggested, so I'm really happy to see that there's trueness to it. I know I keep mentioning that, but there's so many glazes that I've tested that I put on a bowl or I put on a cup or I tested on brown clay and white clay, and I'm like, oh, this doesn't look like at all what you promised me. Check that out in there. You see how it's really white? That almost, almost looks like forever who has experience with this, reduction chino at cone 10. It almost looks like that type of chino. I'm really digging the inside right now because you can clearly see how I brushed it. Like I put it on here and then I got my brush and I let it spin as I just kept going like this from inwards to outwards. And because of that, you can, you can see the brush strokes right there. Like it goes here and then it goes out like this and you can almost see that really nice swirl right in the middle.
This one came out fine, but this one is the regulation one. This one is like, I put three coats on the outside, three coats on the inside, I let it dry in between, I used a brand new fan brush. This one is super regulation. This is exactly how they want you to use the glaze on the back of the bottle as far as the instructions go. Now, let's check out the four coat bowl over here. The four coat bowl really doesn't look that different in between the two and three coat bowl, to be honest with you. It has a really nice pattern. It has a much better pattern. If you look right here at the three coat one, you can see there's a lot more white. But if you look over here at the two coat one, there's almost no white in this, right? You can see it's mostly orange on the edge right here. As for this one, it has more white than this one. And this one with three coats has a lot more white, which is weird because in my experience, the thicker you put this glaze on, the more kind of white chino effect you get. But I must have not put enough coats on here or something because this is the opposite of what I would expect. It's kind of difficult to see them when they're apart, but when you look at all three of them, these two look relatively the same. Like, this is the texture I expect out of the glaze, and this is how I expect it to perform as well. This looks thicker than this one to me, honestly, but I know for a fact that this is four coats, this is three coats, and this is two coats. The two coat bowl kind of sucks, I'm not gonna lie with you. Two coat bowl is like, eh, eh, you got the bare minimum out of the glaze, but these two can, like, be a set honestly they have that same exact double dip line that i made right there just to see what it would look like if it was double dipped and for anyone who doesn't understand what i'm talking about right now because i know not all of you watched like the glaze montage that just happened on the video what i ended up doing is i got a brush i glazed the inside but i went to the top and i went right here a little bit and then when i turned it upside down to glaze it i also had to glaze the bottom right here as i went up and down the body so technically speaking this part right here does have a double dipped version of the glaze it probably has like one or two more layers than i intended it to have and you can tell that i did them in the same style because they both they both have that pretty much okay now let's check out my bowl oh what oh what you scared you scared you scared because my bowl is going to be way more saucy than yours don't be scared just click that like button Shh. Shh. be quiet just click the like button and be scared be, be real scared this is the bowl when it's poured on. Look at that melt. I don't know how many technical layers this is. I would say this is probably about five or six layers, but man, I, I like this a lot more. There's a lot of you who are probably liking this a little bit more than this because this is far more true to the test style on the bottle than this is here. But I've been getting some fantastic colors that not even the company probably expected to get out of this stuff with me pouring on my glaze in this manner. And this is kind of weird to say, but this kind of goes with my assumption earlier. There is more white on this because there's a heavier coat of glaze on this. So I think it's safe to say at this point, especially with me pouring on all the glaze on this one, that the more glaze you put on of Albany Slip Brown, the more white it's going to get. But it doesn't seem like you can just put like one coat extra and get more white, right? You're either going to have to go above four layers or you're going to have to like pour the entire thing on. Okay, okay, don't worry, we're not really fighting anymore, we're not getting a divorce or anything, alright? I just want the TV numbers on an even number, I don't understand why you keep putting it to 17. It belongs on 16, the fact that it's on an even number bugs the crap out of me. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I hope you guys liked this glaze review. This was kind of a pseudo glaze review, as well as like a what happens if you put on two, three, and four layers versus what I usually do, which is just pour the glaze on, you know what I mean? I will say, with a lot of other glazes, I get fantastic colors this way, I get a much meltier surface at the same cone in which I would fire these right here but it also seems that Amico glazes are literally so stable that it, they look the same in between like two coats three coats four coats and the only way you can get a different variation of its own stability because it's way too stable is to like pour it on like I usually do right so I would say this is a more true representation of what we get here but 
I'm not gonna lie, I like my way way better. I wouldn't say this was a really conclusive test. We're gonna have to do this with a homemade test because I think Amico glazes are honestly just too stable to do this with. We might do this test maybe two or three more times, do it with another glaze, see if it makes a difference, and then we can also do it with some homemade glaze. I would love to hear some Potter opinions down in the comments below as to like what glaze you would like me to do this same experiment with because in the end of the day, it's not really wasted product. I, I can still put this on my website store, but at the same time, I think there's probably some potters out there who have a little bit more experience with either this glaze or some other glazes that I probably have in my stock from Amico. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful potter eyes to see. We have the new website store. We have the Instagram. We have the Facebook fan page. We don't do Twitter because it's basically just a bunch of people shouting their opinions to the skies if they matter. But you don't. You don't matter. Big shout out to Amico for sending me this glaze. We have a bunch of glazes they sent me that we're going to be reviewing and testing and seeing what we can get out of them mixing them with a bunch of different stuff i just thought today it'd be really interesting to see what would happen if we put one of my favorite glazes on like two three and four coats and then see how i usually do it when i pour it on pouring it on gets me a really good melty effect and it saves me a lot of time as far as my glazing process goes now i don't have to like three coats this way three coats this way like i just i just get a bucket and pour it on it's done you know but thank you guys for joining me today and i will see you dirty potters next week These two can be sold together on the website. They're basically the same bowl. Are you my papa? Yes, son. Come inside of me. Nope, that was weird. That was weird.